Welcome to a tutorial on how to use a Dobot Collaborative Robot Arm in Dino Robot Studio. We have first to start the Dobot Studio, which is also called a Studio Program, and you have to change the IP address of the robot. After that, it is important to change the device mode to TCP so that the robot accepts the external connection. Back to DynaRobot Studio, we can drag and drop a Dobot resource in the resource group, and in the parameter panel, we set the ARM IP address. After the initialization, you can see the robot visualization in the 3D viewer. DynaRobot Studio connects with the robot arm controller, and the robot positions are updated in real time. There is a Dobot set payload node. With it, we can set an external load in kilo and the center of mass in XYZ in meters. After that, free drive node can activate the free drive mode to move the arm freely. To stop this feature, just deactive the checkbox and trigger the node again. The Dobot button node monitors the buttons on the back side of the arm wrist. If any button is pressed, the corresponding output signal is triggered. In the 3D viewer, double-clicking on the 3D visualized robot mode opens the robot panel. Here you can move each joint individually. Different inverse kinematics configurations can be checked and visualized in the simulation. We can move the robot arm by dragging the coordinate manipulator in 3D Viewer so that the TCP is moved to another position or another orientation. This feature does not need the physical real robot arm, and it's also possible to program the robot in the offline simulation. We can use the Move Joint node to move the robot arm with joint positions. Use the Copy button to copy the actual joint positions from the robot panel and paste it into the move joint node. By pasting into the move joint node parameters, we can execute that node to move the robot arm to that joint position. By default, the move joint node has all of the joint positions at zero. We can connect two nodes using the control edges in orange colored to make them executed in sequential order. Each time the first node has finished, the second node will be executed. There is another way to save the robot arm positions by using the buffer position group. With free drive, I move the arm to another position.
In the buffer position group, there is an update checkbox. By clicking on that, the group saves the actual joint positions and the TCP pose. Here you can see that by connecting and passing through the joint positions from buffer position group to the move joint node, we can move the arm to that position. Move joint node has a move linear checkbox. If it is checked, the arm moves its TCP in a linear motion. To move the arm into a given Cartesian pose, we can use the node Move TCP node. In buffer position group, the TCP is also stored. Connect them to the goal position of the Move TCP node. The arm moves its TCP to that position. We can also combine different joint positions using this concatenate joint node and pass through the resulting joint list into the move joint node. Here you can see that the arm does not stop at the end of the first movement, but continues the joint execution to the second position. By right-clicking on the tool file name in Dobot Resource, we can select the tool XML file for visualization. To clean up, we can click the Shift and Multiple Select Multiple Group Nodes and make it a group. Set Robot Output Node and Wait for Robot Input Node can be used to communicate with the digital IOs connected to the robot controller. Set the I.O. value to true at the right address to activate the vacuum gripper. And by setting it to false, it can be deactivated. Using a weight robot input node, the vacuum detection signal can be processed By connecting three nodes this way, the suction is activated until the vacuum is detected, and then it is turned off. Tooltip calibration can be done using this Collect Tool Poses group. By moving the robot with the tooltip pointing at the same position, we can calculate the tooltip relative to arm TCP. The arm here is moved manually to different positions. At least five positions need to be collected. More positions would improve the precision of the result. After the calibration procedure, we can use the calibration tool pose group to compute the position. The tool orientation cannot be determined this way and is set to zero. Use Emit Actual TCP Node and Transform Pose Node, we can visualize the calibrated tooltip in the 3D viewer. We can manually input the 60 degrees in the Emit Pose Node read from CAD data to set the orientation of the tooltip. After the coordinate transformation, you can see that the Z-axis is aligned with the suction direction. Eye and hand calibration determines the camera position relative to arm TCP. Place a chessboard in well-reachable area in front of the robot. The camera positions relative to that chessboard can be determined and moved. 
Here you can see that more than 20 positions are moved automatically. The program finds reachable positions and avoids any collisions. After the calibration procedure, we have the eye in hand calibration result. Grass planning is an important functional part of DynaRobo Studio. For an example object, a chocolate square, 12 grasping positions are defined. We can simply reduce the number of rotations from 12 to 1, and here you can see the result. Change back to 12 grasping positions, and we can use that to empty the chocolate squares from a bin box. The robot localizes the objects in the box and finds out collision-free possible grasps. You can see that the robot avoids any collision between the system gripper with the box, and it can fully empty the box. In our software DynaRobot Studio, you can very quickly implement such a bin picking application by yourself. There are many different deep learning algorithms for 2D image processing, 3D point cloud processing, object localization, collision avoidance, and path planning available in the software with over 900 nodes and groups provided ready to use for all different tasks. Thank you.